Hello everybody, welcome back to another My Name and Douglas video. Now today we will be going over conditionals and we will be going over chain stats. They both go together. So conditionals in stats can go on action pads, action buttons, they can go on NPCs actions when you click them, and they can, de they can be displayed on a stat leaderboard. You can get all these in the items tab. Now another place you can use these conditionals at is in regions. So if you have a region, on entry or exit actions you can add a conditional. Now one thing you cannot do with conditionals is add a conditional inside of the conditional. But other than that, conditionals are super useful. So let's dive into the bare bone basics about what it is. It's practically an if statement. But use conditionals on stats. So for stats, they're kept for the player. Now if you go to house settings and you have persistent stats on, they'll be kept for a while. And they can have up to 20 different stats on one player. So make sure to have this on if you use stats in a house a lot. It's a brand new option. So if you go on the action pad, you can add a chain stat, which let's just use the word stat, for example. And then you can change the mode increment and then do like 10. Now, if we step on it, nothing happens because we haven't displayed it anywhere. Let's go to the leaderboard and let's just type stat. As you can see, it displays. Step on it again, increments by another 10. Seems to take a second to update. And as you can see, it updated to 30 because I stepped on it twice. Another way you can do it is action buttons. You can change stat, stat, increment 20. And if I tap it, you can see it goes up by a lot. Exact same thing with the NPC, increment stat, increment, and this time let's do 50 to show it's different from the rest. And it updates. So that's the basics of the stats. Now, leaderboards are not the only place you can display stats. You can display it by doing percent percent stat underscore whatever the name of the stat is. Now for this house, I called it stat percent percent, but if you're tracking kills, then you'll want to do stat underscore kills, but you can't display it in chat. You do it on the scoreboard. So go to house settings, scoreboard editor, add item, and you click custom line. Now left click it, and for this, I'm just gonna do test, and then I'm gonna type the word in a different color and E. Percent percent stat underscore stat. Percent percent. As you can see, it's zero. And that's because it's very case sensitive. Now just to show that the scoreboard can do a lot, I'm gonna rename this to test. So then I'm gonna change that test increment 20. If I click it a lot, it should change. Technical difficulty, you cannot use capital letters, but see it updates on the scoreboard every couple seconds if you keep on tapping it. And you can do the same for NPC and action buttons. Now it'll, if you change this to the same stat key, test, it'll also update there, so it'll be in two places at once. This can become very useful, especially like on a player kill. So if you go to housing menu, house settings, and in event actions, you can also use it here. So for a test, we can do player kills, add action. Like every single time a player is killed, you can kills increment one. And you can, dis you can display their kills on the scoreboard. You can also display them on a stat leaderboard. So that's about it for stats. You can use them basically anywhere, regions, event actions. You can display them on the scoreboard. You can also display them on holograms. But there's no point in showing it off because it is literally the exact same. So now let's get into conditionals. Now that you know what stats even are, conditionals are a bit more advanced. 
So if we go here, we can delete the change stat. Let's add action conditional. Now if you click this and add a condition, there's many different conditions you can do currently. If they're in a certain group, like guest or co-op, if they have a certain stat, if they're in a certain region, required permission, has item, doing parkour, or has potion effect. Now for this, I'm going to do has potion effect, and I'm going to do speed. If so, it's going to play sound, just a random sound like note blink. But if it doesn't, then it's going to send a chat message, no effect. So as you see, I have no effect. I do have an effect, night vision, but I have no speed. So I'm going to get myself speed. And now it makes the sound. Now for the if, I'm going to delete the sound and then add a change stat. Test increment 10. As you see, it increments. But if I drink milk, it won't increment. I think go ahead and start seeing where this is becoming useful, especially in regions. So I'm going to go create a region using this region select tool. I talk more about regions in the series, so I'm going to link a playlist up above in the top corner. That way you can watch it. I'm going to select one corner then the other, a little bit under, and then create a region. This region I'm just going to call default house. And then when you enter it, it's going to have a condition. If stat, let's do a stat um, test is greater than or equal to one, then it'll do nothing. So basically what I'm saying is if the test, the test stat, if it is greater than or equal to one, if so, it's going to let you through, but if not, it isn't going to let you through. So let's say it doesn't let you through, how will you program that? What you'll do is you'll press F3, go to chat, and type in coordinates you'll see. Then go back to the region, and the condition, and else it's going to TP player outside of the house. As you can see, my test is 300. But there's another command that is very useful, especially at times like this. It's slash edit stats. You use it by typing slash edit stats space, then type the player. Even if you're doing yourself, you have to type the player name itself, not at S. Then type what you want to change, like test. And then you can set, increment, or decrement. I'm going to do set, and I'm going to set it to zero. And if I try to go in, it'll TP me out. Now this is very useful for making a simulator. For example, if you played Mining Simulator, which is currently one of the top houses, currently it's 170 players, you could base it off of this. You can't go in certain areas unless you're a certain rank. And you could use a rank as a certain stat. And I'm sure you're starting to see where I'm going with conditionals. Conditionals are super useful. But let's say you want to make a shop. Now for that, I'm going to grab a couple things. These are totally optional, but I think they look good. And you need an action button. So if you do iron block, white stained glass, just for an example. Now let's add a condition in this action button. Now what are we going to give the player? Well for this I'm going to give them a diamond sword. If they have at least 500 tests. So it's still going to get conditions, add action, stat requirement, let's do test. If it's greater than or equal to 500. If it is, then we're going to go to if actions, 
we're going to add action give item then add a diamond sword and we're going to allow multiple this will make it where they can buy more than one but if not it's going to send a chat message and say not enough tests and it's also going to play a sound which playing sounds is useful the one sound that is very useful when you don't have enough is villager now so currently I don't have 500 tests still to do that but if you do let's use slash edit stats I set my test to 499 as you see I still can't get it if I set it to one more I can because it's if it's equal to but greater than 500 and I get another diamond sword now you know how to make a basic shop full of items With conditionals, there is many, many more things you can do. You can use all the event actions, like if a player catches a fish, if a player starts parkour, if a player respawns, if a player dies, they may lose some coins. If you kill a player, they may get coins. If the group changes from one to another, then they get coins too. You can add different effects, like if they have item and have a potion effect, they're doing parkour and within the house region there is many many more things you can do with conditions the possibilities are practically endless so i'd like to say good luck and put your house in the comments below and i may view it and i may even show it off in the next episode so thank you for watching and see you in the next housing guide